It's a true honor and pleasure to speak at this distinguished panel. My talk today is about uh, China's local government debt, mostly the uh, off-balance sheet part. So let me first uh, begin with a talk on the a brief introduction on the on-budget on uh, of local government expenditure. I think the most salient feature of the uh, local China's local government finance is really this mismatch mismatch between the uh, revenue and expenditure that you can see from the upper, upper pie chart that the uh, local government accounts for more than 80% of the expenditure, while it only collects uh, around like two-thirds of the total revenue. So partly to meet this uh, gap between expenditure and revenues, uh, the central government ran a very large transfer program. Last year, it's amount to more than five trillion RMB. But there is a problem with this transfer program, namely that some of the transfers require local governments also to uh, contrib contribute. And since the local governments are uh, uh, cash constrained in the first place, so this really forced them into borrowing to finance uh, such, uh, such investment. And China also, central government also posed very tight control over the uh, lending from formal channels, say like issu uh, issuing bond or uh, borrowing from commercial banks. So this really forced uh, local government into like off balance sheet borrowing. And the, uh, when we talk about off balance sheet, I think the first, first term is, uh, to my mind, it will be the uh, local government financing vehicle. But actually, from China's National Audit uh, Office data, we see that uh, it accounts for a substantial part of the off balance sheet local government borrowing, but still, it's not all. It's, uh, there are also other entities, say, as SOEs or public in institutions, basic like institutions like public schools, hospitals, or utilities. So there's, there's probably something deeper, so that, namely that even if you got rid of the local government financing vehicles, you probably will not get rid of this uh, of balance sheet borrowing problem. So I would argue that there are two uh, deeper institutional flows, namely, namely that firstly that after 30, more than 30 years of reforms, that the uh, state sector is still too large and too complex. And the second is really that the state sector is still have a, have uh, this widespread so-called soft, soft budget constraint problem. So namely that when you're borrowing, as a, you're borrowing with expectation that someone else will step in and bail out in times of st stress. So really these two uh, features uh, have driven the remarkable growth uh, in China's local government debt. We see that uh, the upper yellow line is the growth rate of local government debt. Here I include both the explicit and the contingent government liabilities, and the lower green line is the uh, nominal GDP growth. We have seen that it has been growing faster than G nominal GDP by, uh, by, a, by a large margin, and uh, as a result, that uh, the, the debt to, uh, local government debt to GDP ratio has climbed from less than 30% to nearly 40% during the last four years. Here we can see uh, from first from where local government borrows and, and then where they spend the money. Here that we can see that bank, bank lendings account for the majority of the borrowing. Um, and this, uh, this number stands at more than, more than 10 trillion RMB. That's actually larger than the total equity of China's entire banking sector. And another feature is really this. They rely heavily on, on, on some of the short-term uh, debt instruments, say like account payable. And they use those like short-term fundings to fund really projects have really long cycles, say like some of the infrastructure building, buildings probably will take 20 to 30 years to recover its initial investment. So now we have seen there are two problems. The first one is really a sustainable problem that the government debt as a uh, percentage of GDP has been climbing. And there's also this uh, maturity mismatch problem. So aiming to address these two issues, uh, China's uh, uh, central government has issued a series of documents since late, uh, late 2014. The first piece is really also one of the most important pieces, this uh, document 43 uh, issued in October 2014. Uh, the, the most important uh, element in this document is that it, for the first time it allows uh, China's local government to issue debt. And it also proposed a series of institutional arrangements aiming to address the, uh, both the uh, debt sust sustainability issue and the uh, soft budget constraint problem. It, for, 
to address the that sustainability issue that uh, the central government basically has uh, imposed uh, a cap, an annual cap on the both the aggregate amount of local government debt and also they have assigned each province with their each individual caps. But we all know that in the old days when local governments are, are uh, are required to run a, balance, a balanced budget, they still borrow a lot. So it's really the, the soft budget constraint problem that is the key to uh, solve this problem. And, the, and here the central government has made it clear that it will not bail out uh, any local government. And if, when, when any local government uh, default, the province, provincial government has to, needs to be the one to step in and bail it out. So it, this provides an incentive for the province, provincial level government uh, to monitor the thousands of the city and or county level governments. And also there's a requirement that in the future all local government expenditure has to be on budget and the government will not be responsible for any off budget expenditure. So this is basically effectively rule out the uh, implicit implicit guarantees local government provided for the uh, uh, local government financing vehicles or SOEs or other state connected entities. And so if this is su successfully implemented then in the future, the local government financing vehicles will be just be com pure commercial standalone entities. And then in March this, this year, the Ministry of Finance uh, in, uh, started this so-called uh, debt for bond swap program. Uh, aims to eventually replace all outstanding liabilities with bond. And this really aims to solve two, two problems. What, the first one is really the maturity mis mismatch. And he, by, by allowing government to issue bonds, this, uh, this significantly extends the maturity of government's liabilities. Also that the repayments of the, those debt, including in the swap quotas, will all, all be made uh, by China's government's on budget, uh, on budget revenue. So it basically also solved the, the, the make sure that uh, there will be no default on this debt. And then in May this year, both to, uh, both to try to uh, support uh, local government uh, investment, also, also to uh, accelerate the, uh, this uh, bond swap program. Uh, Beijing has issued a few uh, administrative directives. The first one is uh, Probably the most important one is that it effectively posts a cap on the uh, yields on local government debt at 1.3 sovereign yields. And banks are since since uh, since the uh, since the announcement uh, announcement of the document 43 and now local government financing vehicles are perceived uh, as uh, enjoys less not maybe not completely rule out the uh, look, uh, government support from government banks have become reluctant in dealing with them so. This, uh, as a result, Beijing has issued this, this document asking banks to continue to support the ongoing investment projects uh, by the L uh, local government financing vehicle. Then, and then lately, uh, the National People's Congress approved the aggregate cap for this year, and subsequently, uh, uh, up to uh, last week, around 10 provinces has announced their individual caps. So I'll briefly discuss the re remaining risk. The first one is really sustainability. It's, I think it's, now it's mo most of the problem is really about on long, long terms. This bond swap program basically have bought them another three to five years to address this issue. So, but in the long term, the local government needs new source of revenue as, and, uh, and to address this uh, social security issue. And, and, and then the, then the uh, on the soft budget issues that really, I think the tension is really between a growth target that is probably too high and, uh, and the need to address uh, local government debt issues. Basically, if you are aiming for growth rate that too high, the only way to achieve it is probably through like more deficit, local uh, government deficit spendings and basically means increasing local government borrowing. And then also the, uh, the caps on the yields also, this is in some way could be seen as a disincentive for local government to, to strengthen or consolidate uh, its, uh, its fiscal position. Basically, no matter how weak your balance sheet is, that you can basically rule over your debt as near sovereign yields. And then I would just uh, briefly talking about the last point, the investment efficiency issues. Really, that a lot of the justifications for this uh, 
expensive local government uh, spendings are on the ground that those products have uh, like high social returns. But I think social returns, they need to be, be captured at least uh, in the GDP figures because they are, they are like positive externality out of the project, but they have to be reflected in the GDP figures of, of matters of like uh, productivity. So, but we see that in recent years, both the GDP data or the matters of uh, efficiency like TP, uh, total factor productivity has both been trending, trending down and this uh, posed some questions regarding the claim that, the, uh, that those infrastructure products may have high social returns. And then to, uh, just to wrap up, I think in the short term, they have basically buy them, uh, buy them some time to address this issue. So there will be no, I don't think there will be uh, any f local government fiscal def uh, crisis in the next three or five years. But in the long term, both the sustainability of the local government debt, which requires a uh, new source of revenue for local government, and the, uh, the long-term long implications of uh, massive local government uh, ex, uh, investment on China's future uh, if, uh, productivity growth and the efficiency of economies are, are still unclear. Thank you.